Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. He has done great things. Praise the Lord. It is so good to be with you today. God is good. He has done great things. Oh, He saved us. He's preparing a place for us. He's coming to receive us unto Himself. He's working in our lives to mature us. He's using us for His honor and for His glory. He has given us everything that we have. Oh, and He has so much more in store for us. God is good. Even in the little thorn that's in our flesh to keep us humble, God is good. I just want to thank God that He's in charge. And I feel complete. I feel satisfied that He is the one that is ruling my life because He can do a better job than any one of us. We are looking at this amazing grace and we are taking words from the Word for our devotion today. John Newton said, When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. He giveth more grace. Have you realized that? When the burden grows greater, He sendeth more strength when the labor increase. There's no need to fall up. To added afflictions, guess what He does? He added His mercies to multiplied trials, His multiplied peace. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundaries known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he give it and give it again. What a giving God. What a God we serve. Amazing grace. We are looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 10 where our brother, the Apostle Paul, speaks of his thorn in the flesh. In the devotions that we looked at thus far, we looked at the matter of God's grace was enough in his suffering. I want us to move over a little today and look at Paul prayed enough to accept no for an answer. Many times when we go to pray, we have it in our mind what we want God to say or what we want God to do. Sometimes when God says something or do something different to what we want Him to say or do, we keep on praying and believe that He didn't answer our prayer. The truth of the matter is God is God. He answers according to His will. He knows what's best for us, when and how to give it, and we must know when to accept and how to accept what he has given. So Paul prayed enough to accept no for an answer. There's some people that have been praying for years and years and years about a situation in their life and they continue to pray about the very same situation the way how they want it to change. And God is saying, I allow that to be there for a reason. Look at verse 8. He prayed enough to accept no for an answer. Paul said, for this thing, I besought the Lord. In other words, I prayed to the Lord. How many times? Thrice, that it might depart from me. He prayed thrice. Paul then, after three times you stop. One of the things that Paul did is that he prayed about his infirmity. When he recognized that he had this infirmity in the flesh, he prayed. That is the first thing a believer should do when one is sick. Pray first. Pray. Talk to God. Trust God to heal you. And then go see a doctor. Some people say, I don't like to go to the doctor. But they wait so long to go to the doctor. When it's too late, they want to go to the doctor too often and for no reason. Look, as human beings, we need to check ourselves. Because we cannot see what goes on on the inside, 
We need to check ourselves. Equipment out there now can tell us what's going on on the inside. But listen, if you're sick, pray. If you haven't gotten better, go see a doctor. God walks through medication also. The book of Acts is written by Luke. Luke was a physician. He traveled with Paul. He was blessed to have his physician with him. This was a man who would pray and the dead would be raised, but he believed in the physician. So my question to you is, do you pray when your infirmity come? Have you brought your cares to the great physician? Notice something about Paul's prayer. He prayed definitely. Paul take this prayer serious. And Paul told God what he wanted him to do. Lord, take this away. Let it depart from me. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Listen to the words of our Lord in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. The Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan has desire to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Look at verse 32. But I have prayed for thee. It is so good to know that someone is praying for you. Peter should have been, oh, so happy to know that the Lord is speaking to the Father on his behalf. He said, I have prayed for you that what? That thy faith fail not. Satan desired to sift you, but I'm praying that when he does that, that you will not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Wow. Paul, with his thorn in the flesh, Oh, he prayed, Jesus prayed, you and I should pray too. I try to make it a habit. I think I remember one devotion I did close without praying and that thing just rest on my mind. I tried to make it a habit to pray for every devotion at the end and pray for you. Not only that he prayed definitely, he knew exactly what he wanted God to do. He prayed honestly. When I say he prayed honestly, he pleaded with the Lord to take it away. No doubt he agonized in prayer. No doubt this man cried that God will move this thorn in his flesh. He prayed honestly, he pleaded. He prayed persistently. We are told that he made his request three times. After praying three times, Notice what happened. The thorn in the flesh was still there. Did God hear his prayer? Yes, God heard his prayer. Did God answer his prayer? Yes, God answers his prayer. His prayer was answered, not how he expected, but in the way God wanted. God answers his prayer according to his own will. God answers prayer. He answered. Paul's prayer. He answered your prayer. He will answer our prayer according to his will. Some people believe that they can pray and rattle their voice and cause God to move. That had never happened and it will never happen. We are told in 1 John 5 and verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hear it, us. And that's all that he hears. I want to just thank God today for his amazing grace that he provides as we go through our trials. My grace is sufficient for you. Forever my promise is true. Though trials confound you and troubles surround you, my spirit will make your heart new. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace will supply all your need. For all things together work good. If you love me, my grace is sufficient for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the all-sufficiency of your grace. And thank you, Lord, 
for those who are understanding that you are in charge. Even though you do not move the thorn, you place it there for a purpose. Be with each one of us as we experience your grace. God, as we experience your love and your mercy. Oh God, be with your people. Have your way for those who do not know you as Savior. Oh Father, I pray at this time that they will cry out to you and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I receive you as my Savior. Save me. I know, Lord, if they pray such a prayer sincerely, you will save them. God bless each and every one. Be with them in a special way. Meet their needs, dear Father. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Hey, click that button. Thank you for sharing. Someone new will get a new devotion today, and they will share with someone else, and it's going a little bit further across the globe. Thank you for partnering with the Lord.